Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to learn a little bit about putting pictures on slate with a fiber laser. Today I'm working with a 60 watt JPT MOPA from uh, Pascal and I've got my 300 millimeter lens in. I've, I'm just trying it and it seems to work just as good as my 210 lens, but that's kind of what we've got working with today. I'm going to do everything in light burn. And so a couple of things that we're going to talk about today before we get started. First of all, I will tell you that doing pictures on a fiber is a lot easier, in my opinion, than doing them on a CO2. Um, I find that if uh, you want to start doing pictures on your fiber, uh, the little aluminum business cards or slate are two mediums that are, is a great place to start. Um, I'll get you in the ballpark today, show you kind of some basic settings, the things that you got to pay attention to. The other thing that I'm going to show you today that you might not know is there is a feature in Lightburn that you can actually catalog your settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate this image, we're going to burn it on the fiber, and then I'm going to have Lightburn put the settings right below that image. So I have the ability to catalog kind of what I'm doing, what changes I'm making, and what differences you're going to see in that slate. It's a great feature because that way I don't have to worry about writing it down somewhere, losing that information, or two weeks later when I get back to it, I'm going to go, you know, what was I doing and, you know, what made a difference? So uh, I'll show you how to do this. It's a great intro to the variable text feature in Lightburn, and it's really handy if you use it. A couple of other things I'm going to tell you about engraving images in general. Whether it's a CO2 or fiber, you want to make sure that you're using top quality images. They're evenly lit, um, no harsh shadows. If you have harsh shadows when it comes to trying to do images on a laser, it's a deal breaker. It, it is very tough to deal with. So you want to look for evenly lit images. And what I would do to start is just go out there on the internet, choose some high resolution images that don't have any harsh shadows, and give it a try. You're going to see that the uh, settings that we're going to deal with today are pretty straightforward. And uh, one thing I found about a fiber is you get in the ballpark really quickly. And it's just a matter of some minor changes and then you'll be able to good to go. The other thing that I wanted to mention is just thank you so much for the support. I'm using some new uh, uh, video equipment today. Uh, and as you can see, my video camera will follow me around now, which is kind of nice. I'm using the Insta360 link and uh, really enjoying that camera. So thank you again for all the support. Remember, if you like the content, hit that uh, like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you have the ability, um, hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel. It's those contributions that are making this content possible. So let's jump into Lightburn and I'll show you how to do a picture like this. So here we are in Lightburn. Here's tip number one. Before you notice that I defaulted to my normal uh, CO2 layout, and that's because it's right on top. And so one of the things that I found that uh, before I go to an existing file, especially if I've got my CO2 layout here and I want to open a fiber file, I don't want to uh, go up here, go to uh, recent projects and open a fiber file while I've got this CO2 open. It flips things around, it does strange things to your layout. And so what I will tell you is that you want to make sure that you change to your uh, fiber layout first. So what I did is I chose my 300 millimeter lens that we're going to be playing with today. Once I have that loaded, then I will go up to File, Recent Projects, and open up <clears throat> my, the, uh, the file. And then everything comes in uh, oriented properly. If you don't do that, if you open this file and you've got your CO2 desktop showing, it flips things around. It just kind of scrambles up your layout a little bit. So just make sure you, you're on your fiber uh, profile, the lens that you want, before you open up uh, an existing file. Okay, so one of the things that uh, I'll show you is that uh, this image is a fairly good quality image. You notice that it does have some shadows, but not bad. You still have a lot of detail in here. And what I did is one of the great things about the new iPhone is if you put your finger on the subject, it will actually cut out that subject and you can just uh, uh, save it to your camera roll or email it. And so it's a quick, easy way to get rid of the background. 
One of the things that uh, you will learn if you can is to usually eliminate the background on your subjects. Uh, it will make a big, big difference. And so we did that. We brought that. We imported this. Uh, I didn't use any third-party software in any way to, to uh, modify it in any way. We're going to do the, the slight tweaks that uh, I did with this image right in Lightburn. And uh, it, it really isn't going to take too awful much. So one of the things that you got to remember is we'll, we'll, engraving on something black, like a black aluminum business card or a black piece of slate, you're going to want to make sure that your image is inverted. Otherwise, it will never look very good at all. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my image. And we're going to talk just about a few things about uh, where we're going to get started. And I'll show you some different effects today uh, on how things are done. Uh, but we're going to start at 300 millimeters per second. We're going to have a max power of 16 and a half. Again, most of the pictures that I'm doing are anywhere from 12 to 18. So it's somewhere depending, depending on the picture. My frequency is going to be right around 40. And that's a great place to start. My Q pulse, I haven't changed. It's going to be at 200. Uh, I'm going to vary this picture between 254 dots per inch to uh, 318. Here's the other thing that makes a huge difference in the pictures. And I, I'll thank Jason Dory for this tip uh, of Lightburn. He provided this and it, and it does really matter. If you enable the dot width adjustment, turn that on and your dot width of 0 0.02. Uh, what I found when I did that and turned that feature on, uh, it just got a lot easier to deal with pictures in general. And so give that setting a try. So those are the settings that we ended up with. Um, and so you've got those. And then what I did is I went in, I'm going to right mouse click. <clears throat> got to select it first. Right mouse click. Uh, adjust the image. And you notice that I have a side-by-side -side comparison. There's one other thing I wanted to show you. Come up here, we want to make sure that this negative image right up here is selected. We've got to flip this around to make sure that it engraves properly. So you want this negative image to be on. And so getting back to the adjustments, if we right mouse click, go down to adjust image. Now we have a side by side. This is what we started with. And you notice that it's kind of hard to tell what you're doing here. So what I normally do is I flip this back around. I invert the display back. Now this doesn't have any, uh, this doesn't affect your settings at all. This is primarily to just view it. So I'm going to invert this so I can see what's going on. So one of the things that you, uh, you will notice is we've got our uh, Stucky mode down here. Usually I'm always using either Stucky or Jarvis. Those are the two photo uh, that I use. Um, we're right now at 318, but it can range anywhere from 254 to 318. And one of the big differences you're going to see today, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this, we'll start with this image with no sharpening whatsoever. And... Uh, you'll see that this image gets is kind of flat. Uh, you don't get a lot of texture. Texture is your friend when it comes to engraving uh, images on either a CO2 or a fiber. And you're going to see this is where we're going to start. And we'll go ahead and engrave this. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll increase our, our enhance radius. And this is basically these two sliders our sharpness. And so typically, you know, you're going to want to start to increase the sharpness. And what that does is that's going to give this image some depth. It's going to, you can, you can start to see that it's going to bring out the, uh, the feathers on the dog. It's going to, you know, it's just going to uh, start to build some definition. And again, this is kind of a personal preference, but um, this is what you want to play with. So you can see that we've got this is what we started with. This is what uh, we're going to head towards. And we'll go from there. The other thing that I'm going to tell you is if I would print, or excuse me, preview this, uh, it's going to give you a pretty decent idea on kind of where you're at. Um, but again, what you see on your preview versus what you actually get out are two pretty different things. So don't freak out if you look at your preview and it really doesn't look very good. 
The next thing that we're going to talk about is down here, this is uh, what I talk about far as uh, when we engrave this, it's going to go ahead and kick out my speed, my power, uh, and my frequency, and my dots per inch, and it's going to do that uh, on, the, on the piece of slate. And I'll show you how to do this. This is pretty easy. It's uh, pretty quick and easy. It's part of the variable text feature. And you can see if I test it, um, this is telling me that we're engraving this at 300 millimeters per second at 16.5% power, 200 nanoseconds at 39.5 kilohertz, and at 254 dpi. Now there's some settings that it won't catalog, but this is a great place to start. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the variable text feature so you can get the readouts of your settings that will be uh, displayed right underneath your image. So right now, we've already got them set up down here. I'm going to show you how to do this. But just so you know what we're talking about, if I uh, preview this, you can see that we've got settings that are uh, our speed, our power, our pulse rate, our uh, frequency, and our DPI. And uh, so that will change when we change our, our uh, parameters on our layer. So what we're going to do, I'll show you where this information lives. If we go to Help, Online Documentations, and we go VAR for Variable, Text, and Light Burn, go there. Scroll down here to this Variable Text Formats. This will give you all the different formats that you can use. And this is a hugely powerful feature in Lightburn if you haven't used this before. Spend some time in here. It can save you a mountain of time. If we go all the way down to the bottom where we're going to look for cut setting text formats, um, these are the uh, letters that you can use that if you set it up properly, if you put in a P, it will illustrate the max power, including the percentage sign. Same way with speed. So we're going to use the capital S, the capital P. We're going to come down here and use the capital Q for uh, pulse width. This pulse width is only for MOPA lasers. If you don't have a MOPA laser, you won't have this setting, but these settings will work fine on a non-MOPA laser. And then frequency. So we're going to use those four letters. That's where this stuff lives. Um, this is a great way to search things up. It's right handy. They've got it located right here under the help section, online documentation. So don't be afraid to use that. So if we wanted to set this up, all we've got to do is basically come up here and we're going to uh, do a capital S. We're going to do a space. We're going to do a capital P. We're going to enter that, come down and do a capital Q, space, capital K space and a capital D. And so each one of those letters is going to tie back into the setting on the layer that you assign to this. So if we come back here and we go to our O3, um, what it will do is it will mimic the settings that we've got here. There's one other step that we've got to do and it's the when I have my text, right now it's just text, just like any other text. If uh, I wanted to uh, start using the variable text feature, I have to come up here to this box right up here where it says normal. And if I click that and drop down and select cut settings, now what happens is each one of these letters ties back to the settings that you see in this letter. So if I preview it now, you're going to see that it's going to pick up the settings. One of the things that I haven't figured out, and if you guys can help me out, uh, uh, make a note in the comments if there's something I'm doing that's wrong here. But when you have an image here, like I do with this dog, it will not pick up the speed, the power, any information on this image layer. So what I normally have to do is just generate another layer and basically mirror whatever settings I've got in my, in my image layer with this layer down here, and as long as it's either on fill or line, then this uh, variable text feature works. So these two, the image layer and this, uh, this green layer, um, are pretty much set the same way, and that way I can catalog my settings. But that's how easy it is to set it up uh, in the variable text feature. 
give you a quick shot of how I prepare my slate before I engrave pictures on them. This is a raw piece of slate taken just right out of the box. It has nothing applied to it. And what I do is I take this um, spray lacquer, usually semi-gloss or even satin would be best, and um, I spray a very light coat on my, on my uh, slate. It really makes your designs pop, um, but you want to do that before you engrave it. The other thing that I will tell you is if for some reason uh, you get a piece of slate that is very, uh, you know, it's not even or it's got a lot of texture to it, just take a sander to it. Um, a lot of times if I'm trialing, trying to dial in a setting, I will actually sand the image off a piece of slate that I've already done and recoat it with lacquer and I'm starting all over again. So coating your uh, pieces of slate with just a little bit of spray lacquer, they make uh, many different kinds, but uh, that seems to work really well. Just a very light coat and you'll be good to go. Okay, we have the last one coming off here. Um, went with 16.5 on the uh, power, and it changed the, uh, the frequency just a little bit. I went down on the frequency a little bit, as you'll see. We went from 39.5 to 38, and you'll notice that it just darkened it just a little bit. And so let's check these images out and see which one we like. Okay, here's a composite of all of our different images. And so you can see that I stayed with 300 millimeters per second the entire time. I never changed that. The only thing that I changed was my percentage of power. So you can see that this is at 15%, 14 and a half, 14. This one down here is 17%, 16%, 18%. I was jumping around. And some of the things that you can kind of see right off the bat is 14% is probably not quite enough. You can see that the image is a little subtle. Uh, the 18% is way too much. You start to lose the uh, forehead, the contour in the ear. Um, you can definitely tell that the 18 is is too much. And so from, from my liking, I, I like these two right here, just between the 16 and the 17%. So what I decided to do is I burnt this last one and I did 16.5% power, 300 millimeters per second, and uh, I reduced the frequency a little bit. I thought that I was getting quite a bit of brightness uh, on the forehead, and I wanted to just uh, tone it down just ever so slightly. One of the ways you can do that is if you uh, reduce your frequency just a little bit, it will darken your image a little bit. It's kind of like applying gamma one way or the other. So um, if you're getting very close to what you like, but it's either a little too light or a little too dark, increase or decrease your, uh, your uh, frequency and uh, you'll be in the ballpark. So there you have it. As you can see, there really isn't any of these that are horrible. All of them would work. Uh, again, this one right here, uh, it's just a personal preference more than anything. But thought I'd show you not only the technique to show you your, uh, your settings on the bottom. That's very handy, especially for doing something like this. And uh, now you can get started on Slate. It's not hard to do. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Please like and follow. Subscribe if you can. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.